change your mind, change your money, change your life. I am Coach Rob Lee Simmons, the host of this podcast, and let me be your tour guide to greatness. If I was doing any better, I would be you. So welcome back to the Greatness Academy podcast. I am here with Mr. Michael Lane. He is the Chief Risk Office Lead Strategist. And so he's basically, let me tell you what he does. So he is a subject matter expert in banking and a subject matter expert in fitness. He is the, uh, he's an entrepreneur. He's the owner of uh, Lane Wellness Co. So welcome to the show, my man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for having me, man. It's been a long time coming, but I'm glad we got it figured out. Yeah, absolutely, man. Just kind of going back and forth, trying to match, match strategies, man. I mean, it's, it's been a tough one, but I am so glad to have you. And so I'm going to, I, I personally wanted to get you on this show because I think uh, the man that you are and then the information that you have is what people need. And I really appreciate you for coming on brother. Man, thank you. Thank you. So I'm, so I'm going to get into the business, right? So you are completely, absolutely noticeably fit. Right. So how does being fit uh, allow you to be successful in the things that you do? Oh, man, it starts my day off with the mindset that today is going to be hard. And I think so, so much like we want to be comfortable and we want it to be easy. But just in my experience, it doesn't work that way. So I try to set myself up with a hard day and a good workout. And I'm like, man, if I can can complete that then the rest of the challenges that come my way won't be so bad. Oh man, that is a, that's a beautiful way to look at it, man. I did. I didn't look at it that way. I just look at it like here. Well, here's the first hard thing I'm going to do, but Hey, something else going to have to be harder. And something, I mean, (laughs) but the the challenge yourself to do that, man, is amazing. So what led you into wanting to start to build a company and a brand around fitness? Man, you know, it's crazy because my friends have been telling me I've been doing this for years and I, I didn't, you know, people see before you see it. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. With me, it's just been a journey. It started in one place. And then once I realized all of the benefits that I could get from fitness and mentally as well as physically, like I wanted to share that. I felt like I feel like it's, it's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to share that. And I'm supposed to kind of show what it's done for me and how it's helped me in hopes that it can be that for other people. Oh, man, that's, hey, gems already, man. I <laughs> I, I usually have my, my notepad, but I don't fill my notepad up and I got one good sheet. So now I got to do lines and blocks of notes, but nothing but gems, man. So let me ask you, uh, you know, through your time, uh, so basically you're family man, right? And mm-hmm. then you also, uh, a subject matter expert in fitness on top of that, a company man, like how do you balance those things in your life and be good at all of them? Man, I can't say that I'm always doing good at balancing those. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing is I'm, I'm regimented in routine. Mm. And that really helps. I'm regimented in a routine and I don't, I try to limit distractions as much as I can. So I keep my routine the same. And that routine is usually fitness first thing in the morning. And then I'm going into the office. And then when I get home, I'm devoted to family. And if I spend my time doing the first two things right, it gives me more time to do the last thing right. Man, <laughs> hey, I'm about to, I'm about to sit back watch this while I'm editing, (laughs) then I'm going to take notes. I'm going to apply it. And then I'm going to be 10 times stronger next year. Watch me. Hey, I'm with it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So what, what are some of the uh, biggest challenges you face in a day where your routine is thrown off? Well, being able to adjust, see, and this is kind of like my other thing. I always tell people the reason, one of the other reasons that I do, my fitness first thing in the morning is because when you try to do it in the afternoon or trying to do it on your lunch break, something always happens. A meeting's always going to pop up. Kids are calling. Your wife needs something. Like something 
95% of the time is guaranteed to happen. So if I get my workout in before everybody else wakes up, that's one thing out of the way that I got done. So now it gives me a lot more flexibility throughout the day to shift things as they may pop up. No, that's good. And so uh, let's talk about, let's kind of transition into like when, when, when you are working out with clients, mm -hmm. uh, do you think a lot of the times when you're dealing with a client, is it more mental than actual physical when it comes to them overcoming challenges? 1000%. 1000%. Because I think we all get to it where the pain comes, right? The physical pain comes, but it's not the physical pain that, that makes us want to stop. It's the like, do I want to push through? We have to make a decision right then. Yeah. yeah. Like, do I do I want to push through it? And a lot of the times, people just need um, a little help seeing the benefit. Because at the moment, they don't see that. They just feel the pain. Right. Or that reminder of like, you know, what are you in this for? Why are you here? Um, and just having conversations. A lot of people, too, want to feel like, you know, that they're not alone in this. And that's the beautiful thing. Like, it doesn't matter how advanced you are you know what the pain feels like you know it's a different right exactly so there's that there's that thing so when i'm talking to my clients i can relate on a different level so do you prefer working out with someone or working out by yourself by myself well both and here's why i prefer to work out by myself majority of the time because that way my schedule, like I can keep it on my schedule and it gives me once again, the flexibility. And then I like working with people too, because every now and then I need that, that push, that test, or, or even just learning something from them. Like I learned stuff working out with other people too. And so it gives me the opportunity to kind of expand my, my fitness Rolodex exercises I can recall off the bat or new twists that I didn't know because I'm working out with people that do this just as much as I do, if not more, or sometimes if not, if not less. And there's benefit in that too, because they show me some things like fundamentally that like, oh crap, I learned a new way to word something, a new way to explain something. So it's always good to work out with other people too. Yeah. I uh, I am so introverted, uh, but I feel that I have the best workouts, not when people are watching, but when people are, and it's not the encouragement, it's the, I don't want to call it validation. It's, it's something that happens that makes me go into a different level of completing the task. I, I, I think is uh, what most people have is a fear of failure. Yeah. Um, is there anything in your life that you have a fear of failure that makes you excel in what, what you do? Going backwards. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm an alpha man. So that's our, that's our thing. <laughs> yeah. No backward steps. No going backwards, <laughs> man. That, uh, I didn't know that was one of y'all's credos, man. Y'all yeah. ain't all bad. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Shout out to the alphas for that one. Yeah, man, you know it. <laughs> Um, yeah, going backwards, I just, you know, we work so hard to get here and I understand that there will be changes, but I don't want to go backwards on my account. You know what I'm saying? If something's right. going to happen to push me backwards, I don't want it to be because I messed it up. Let it be because something else happened. Yeah, that's, man, that's, that's real. That is real life because a lot of people actually have to deal with, uh, the fact that they have moved backwards and, that can throw people off so much if they don't focus on the fact that forward is really the only way. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't focus on that, I mean, you could really lose yourself. And so I, I really commend you to keep that always in the back of your head that, hey, man, I, I have to be better than I was yesterday. I have For to sure. by any means. And even if it's in, and, and that's the one thing about time management and, and life management that you have all of these things that are going on in your life and you know, you, and it's okay to fail. It's okay. You right. fail at one thing, but hell, I'm going to be a better dad today, at least, Right. you know, I'm going to be a better uh, subject matter expert, at least uh, something I'm going to get better 
at something, but but I can't I can't you can't see me with uh minuses across the board. That's just not gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Have you ever heard uh um golly, what's his name? I forget. I was just, Les Brown. You ever heard of Les Brown? I have, I have. Yeah, have so he has a saying, used to be don't make no honey. So when you're thinking about what she used to be, like used to be don't make no honey. You gotta <laughs> focus on what's what's next, what's ahead. So yeah. that's good. I told you, man, I gotta sit down. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna have so many notes at the end of this meeting. It's gonna be insane, man. So are you a reading man? Do you read or do you uh audio book? Man, I'm I'm an audio book, I'm a strong believer in audio books, and then I'll read periodically too. So here's how that works for me i started out listening to music in the gym and man one of my well my brother-in-law actually kind of challenged me to be better and one of the ways that he suggested that was like getting to read more and to read more and sometimes you know you get a book and it takes you forever to get through it mm -hmm. well he was like man you need to switch to audiobooks so i switched to audiobooks in the morning while I work out or while I run, I just feel like, man, it's a real superset. I'm strengthening my mind, strengthening my body at the same time. It has definitely helped me in ways that I cannot even articulate. So to answer your question, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm an audio book man and I'll I'll read a book too every now and then just to just to do it. Like yeah. right now I'm reading uh I'm reading Sydney Portier um measures of a man and i just finished listening to the ways of the superior man mm. Mm. I, i'm them gyms because i haven't read neither of those so i'm oh i'm definitely going to start with the way of the superior man. i'm saying get that on get that on audible because yeah. it's it's a lot thrown at you real fast and for me when it's a lot thrown at me real fast it takes me really long to read it because I have to sit with that for a while. But I get it on Audible. I find that I'm a little uh, better to keep up with what's going on. Yeah, that's and I'm, it's crazy because I'm the same way. I I truly believe in a two for one, right? So I work out to audio books. I get all the time. Man. Like that. That is that is man. I, it's a cheat code, bro. I'm telling it you, it's a, it's a cheat code. It uh, is. And I listen to uh, Grant Cardone very very often, and that is like. That's my hype, man, because the things that he teaches and then the level at which he teaches, uh, you know, brings that energy level. And sometimes uh, in some of the statements he make, I feel bad. Like, damn, I do do that. Like, I need to correct mm -hmm. that. You so I'm in the middle of, yeah, I'm not quitting. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I love you got to send me your uh, Grand Cardone recommendations because he talks about him a lot. So I need I don't know where to start with that. So you got to send me some. I got you. I'll tell you now. I'll drop one now. Uh, 10x rule is probably a really good starting point. Um, I, I've read two other books after that. If you're not first, you're last. And then right now I'm reading the um, guide to being a closer. Uh, but um, I'm going to definitely write them down and send it to you. But like the starting point, 10x rule, you will you will change your life in at least one or two aspects by reading that book period mm. whatever it is that you're doing uh you realize that you're not doing enough of it whatever it is so it's, it, it's good man so uh let's let's get into the finances a little bit right so like how do you feel i think which is probably i, I and i try not to you know socially pick people apart but probably i would suggest that your your routine is what keeps your finances um in order how do you feel um, is the best way to keep your uh, personal finances in order? And then do you feel like there's a difference between your business finances and your uh, personal finances? Definitely. So let's start with the how do we keep them in order? Um, definitely budget. I have, you know, expenses and stuff coming out on the spreadsheet just so I can see it. But also what I really love, and this is probably my best tool right now, is Digit. I don't mm. know if you're familiar with it. It used uh, to be called Digit. I think now it's called Opturn. Okay. Um, yeah. Op, op, Opturn. O-P-O-R-T-U-N. So anyway, <clears throat> within there, it is what you do is you just set it and forget it. So when we're looking at budget and I'm looking at like what are things we want to do this year? We want to go on vacation. Okay, cool. We want to set this much aside 
okay, cool. And all I do is I go in there at the beginning of each year and I say, we need X amount for a vacation. We need X amount just to save for strategy. We need X amount for this. Mm. And I put it in there and it automatically deducts it from my bank account. Oh, that's dope. So yeah, so for me, that is everything. You can see it, you can do whatever with it. Like I, I can't tell you the stuff that I've been able to do as far as just planning for my family and not have to think about it. Yeah, I think automation is the future, especially when it comes to finances. A lot of times um, we are very habitual in the things that we do with our money. Mm-hmm. And because we have that, if we have a, a tool to be able to sit it, set it and forget it, or an ability to let something else monitor it, hey, I'm going to work off these $100. You're going to find a way to fit it into your habit. And if you can do that for two weeks, uh, you know, I'm an army man and army men, we know uh, climatization to anything. So whether it's weather, uh, whether it's an environment, uh, whether it's habit, two weeks, you do it for two weeks and it is what it is. Mm-hmm. No, that's real. Yeah. And so I, I think that is really the 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 key to life. And then we have so much AI, uh, AI um, products coming up and Web3 is kind of we're on a front end front edge of of web three i think people understanding how to automate their systems uh man that is a game changer man for personal and for business i think i think we're really about to be on a new frontier for sure it, it but this is like the wave you got to catch though right yeah um i also believe and and let me say this i also do believe that there is going to be a point in time uh, where some people lean too far on automation and then mm-hmm. they forget how to do the manual part, which is where your intelligence and, you know, motor skills and all these other things come from. But again, as an army man, that is just one of the things that we teach is actually how we train It's for, and it's crazy. So I've been doing this for 14 years. I've been in the military for 14 years and it is literally something we do in the army all the time we do we practice everything manually and then when we go and train to fight then we give each other all of the tools and everything necessary Mm -hmm. because it gives you you know number one it gives you a a minimal viable solution for anything that you do i know that if my weapon breaks i know how to use my hands I know mm-hmm. if this computer breaks, I know I can bust out a piece of paper and do the same process. And so it is very, very important when you're training, ensure that you use the minimum viable solution to whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Again, that's the same, it's the same concept of like, hey, if I'm practicing to run a marathon, if I'm about to do uh, 26, 26.3, 26.2, I need to be running 30 miles. Mm-hmm. Because, because I know if I can run 30, I can run 26. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's just, that's just, I that's, think we're going to get lost in the, the the automation of that. But if people take heed to that, that is going to really be the key to success, man. Yeah. I think, I think you're exactly right. And it's, it's crazy because people are going to want it in some senses. And then I think on the other sense, we're going to lean back to it, meaning, we're getting more and more of the automation through things that we can achieve as far as, you know, financially, but I think, and even personally, but I think there's going to come a time too when we start leaning back to the, uh, everything's cyclical, you know how Yeah, goes. absolutely. Absolutely. And so how, how vital do you believe that the information that you have, and I would just say you, because I work out, but I don't work out like you. You like the Black Thor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, how vital do you think um, these two topics, fi- uh, fitness and finance, are uh, to communities? Invaluable. Because it boils down to one thing, that you need to be successful in every area of life. Discipline. Oh, like yeah. Got to have discipline. It really doesn't matter what it is that you want to be successful in. If you don't have discipline, you know, it's not, it's not going to work out. And for me, finance was kind of like the thing that I was, I walked into it, right? 
was good with numbers growing up. They said, oh, you're kind of smart. You know, you maybe you should look into these kind of areas. And then the next thing I know, I'm, I'm in school for accounting, you know, right, right, kind of walking right. through it that way. But with the fitness side of it, it is really more so like innate, that other side of it, where it's like, um, I know how valuable communities are. I know how valuable we are to each other. And I know how valuable just spending time with people who are striving for more, what that does for you. I know what it does, what it did for me. And I know seeing people elevate in one area of life kind of makes you want to elevate in other areas of yeah. life. So, you know, you don't want to be lagging. You're like, man, if I, and you get the mindset, man, if I can do this, I can do that. If I can run, I didn't think I could run. If I could run two miles, man, maybe I could run three. Shoot, if I can run three miles, you know what? Maybe I can go into work and figure this out. I figured that out. Man, I figured that out at work. You know what? Next thing I know, maybe I should do this. And it just kind of opens up a world of possibilities that you always were able to do and didn't even know it. So that's how I think that all comes together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think, and it does come down to to each one, teach one. Um I am really starting to set elements into my business where I'm able to um, give back into the communities and reach back out to, you know, not even just the kids, but the elderly people. I had one um, lady at a, a book fair we went to last week and she walks up and she tells us that she's too old and um, her time hasn't come and she just can't do it. But the fact of the matter is she had her two grandchildren with her and I had my product and I said, it's not too late for you because you are the key to the generation behind you. Mm. Right. And so if, if we understand how to share and pour into each other um, and, and rebuild communities through education and giving back, uh, cause I, at the time it was, um it was my free ebook. She didn't really know how to use the phone, but guess what? Hey, pass that phone to the grandbaby. The grandbaby going to load the phone on here. And then if you need to print it out, then I'm going to give her instructions to let you know I print it out. And then I'm going to make sure I follow up and make it happen. But, yeah. you know, I mean, just free. And, you know, I think I, I'm the free game king, man. I love to give free game. But I think uh, that's important to the community. Uh, because if you can't, if you have if you have a blessing and you can't share it with others, then it's just a blessing for you. And a crazy thing about it is, why would you have a gift that you're gonna die with that don't mm, make no that's sense. true you gotta share it absolutely see, that's what that's what so to me that is the epitome of what we're trying to do with the run club because i want everybody to come and we call it a run club but you can run walk crawl whatever but to be around other people that have um a certain type of mindset i found that runners have a mindset um it's this, it's, there's a seriousness about it. Mm. Yeah, and, um, it's real. It's real life. Because it's real. It's real. It's real. <laughs> so there's a seriousness about it. Even even if you're just walking, there's a, because there's a commitment to like, you have to do it. It ain't nobody, it ain't nobody pushing you. It ain't nobody. No, you have to do it. And all we can do is give you life lessons and encouragement. And I think that that's a metaphor of life. Surround yourself with good people that have done this before can give you life lessons and encouragement and you can go out there and learn how to do it. And if I can give you that, that's for free. Right. You know, so the run club is for free. It is supposed to transfer into other areas of life. So if I can give you that, then I feel like I'm doing my job. So that's what, that's what I want. No, I think that's, that's super dope. Um, like, Hey, right after this, I want you to give some plugs to the, to the run club, like where y'all meet, what time y'all meet, the location y'all meet, but definitely looking at that type of network. And I, by all means, I believe the other way to build community is continually networking. Because if I share my finance information and you share with me your business fund information, and then we share workout information together, both of us just got stronger. Right. And that is really what community is about. But the run club, all it sounds like, and I know what it is because I, I'm in a run club too. It's called the United States Army. That is the biggest <laughs> you are in a real run club. <laughs> yeah, the biggest run club in the world. But what that does is it builds two things, right? Integrity and initiative. And if you mm. got those two things, you can do whatever it is that you want to do. Like there, there's 
There is nothing that you can't accomplish if you wake up and say, this is what I'm going to do. And it's probably going to suck because everybody ain't the greatest runners. You're going to feel mm -hmm. something. And you there's just this. And it, and it happens in, in fitness and working out, too. There's this moment of can I do this that always happens. And when you push through that, you become limitless. Limitless is another good book, too, if you haven't read that one. I mean, uh, I'm right. You see, I'm writing all this down. Yeah, yeah. I told you, I'm, I'm gonna have <laughs> to watch my notes live. <laughs> I gotta look back about three times at the at this one, man, because there's some gems in here. But definitely, man, like that is really the key to life. So do do you, you know, and you know, forgive my brain because I can't be everywhere. Do you feel like, um, that there are things that you have done that didn't meet the standards and qualities that you were expecting. Yeah. Yes, for sure. So um, I think in my career, there have been things that I have done that didn't meet the quality of the things that I, I was expecting. And this is in my business career. And although I feel like I'm where I, I need to be, I feel like I left something on the table a little bit. My weakness, I would say, in the business world is I don't network as well as I should. And it's way. not because for anything else that there are a lot of politics in in the business place and politics turn me off. Me too. I'm not I'm not one for them. So I there are times that I'm, I could have sucked that one up. And <laughs> at the time, I couldn't do it. So, yeah, yep. I, think that's, I think that's kind of it. Yeah. But you know what? Maybe that's what leads to our entrepreneurial spirit as well. Yeah, absolutely. I would say this, though, and I and I am learning this through Khaleesi and my wife. I am really learning that, uh, number one, you have to look at things like this. Uh, when, when you're dealing from the business aspect, uh, it's not about you. Because when I build my business or anything that I do, and I and I want to be truly organic about this, and I think I said it earlier, like I can't take this stuff with me. So anything mm -hmm. that I do is preparing and building a legacy, everything that I do. So if it's a business, if it's a sports team, what I want to do is plant a seed, right? And so how can I plant these seeds, you know, and not be a farmer? So mm -hmm. I say that to say, everybody needs some level of guidance. And in a point in state where... I really want to, I really do want to network. And I, I know from my mindset, and it's just really a mindset shift, that if there are certain relationships that I have to have in order to plant a certain seed, right? Mm -hmm. I, need, I need the farmer in order to teach me how to plant the seed. And so I don't, and I am never, of course, that's why I call myself the free game king. I'm never stingy with knowledge. And so, uh, and all my mentees know that. But um, I have to learn how to be a mentee as well. And that's not really playing politics because at the end of the day, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. And then when, I rem when, if I'm, when I'm able to remove myself from the picture, then it makes it easier for me to walk up and just be, because I am super socially awkward. And people will know it. And I'll just sit there and be like, all right, it was great meeting you because this conversation is over. I don't want to talk. My brain shut down. But... <laughs> as I'm pushing through the conversation and everybody have a good time and I, maybe I'm the only one that thinks I'm socially awkward. I know when I make these connections that it's not about me. Um, I'm looking for a farmer to teach me how to plant seeds. Mm. That's something I will definitely take with me. Yeah, for sure, man. It's, I mean, I learned so much, Michael, I learned so much today. Um, and I really appreciate it. Uh, before we get out of here, I, I always have a few questions that I ask people that are almost mandatory. My last guest, I wasn't able to ask him because he was dropping so many gems that I was like, I think he already answered the question 15 minutes <laughs> into the show, right? So uh, let me ask you first question and mandatory question of the show is, what was the largest purchase that you have ever made? And then how did it make you feel? God, the largest purchase, I, and we're talking about just for me. Yeah. Man. 
this is gonna sound crazy, but I don't like buying myself stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you need to treat yourself, man. I know, I know, I know. And I say all that, and somebody will see my closet like, man, you fool it. You lying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say the largest purchase I ever made for me was probably my, probably my Mustang. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my probably God. Mustang. Yeah, I say that's probably it. And it made me feel great. Oh, <laughs> it made yes. Me yes. So that's I the have, one. I guess they need kind of to know. I got a 65 um, must, Ford Mustang. And the crazy thing about it, I was driving to my son's baseball game and I saw it and it said for sale by owner. And I was like, wait, what? And I called my wife and I said, babe, hey, <laughs> I got to do it. I said, I'll never <laughs> find this car again. I got to do it. She was like, ah, OK. And so, yeah, that was that was it. Yeah, I love it, man. That's, be <laughs> that's beautiful, man. I, I haven't had that eureka moment yet, uh, but Khaleesi, you know, when it's coming, this, this is going to be a very short conversation because I'm the same way. I don't buy myself anything. Uh, I am super, uh, I'm going to say I'm frugal, right? So mm -hmm. if like, if um Mr. Krabs and then everybody hate Chris dad had a baby. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's me, man. Like I am super like, hey, cut them lights off. That's 13 cents an hour. <laughs> like, <laughs> so uh, when it happens for me, when it happens, when I see what I want, um, it's going down. I might call her and be like, "Hey, it's happening. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> I'm done. coming back with know. something. Yeah, I'm coming back <laughs> with something." And uh, this is probably a once in a lifetime opportunity, man. That's awesome, mate. I I I definitely want to put some things in work. Um, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Michael has a huge social media presence. Um, he's and when I tell you he's a subject matter expert, I mean that in every sense. Uh, Michael, where can they find your business and um, your socials? I mean, I'm all over the place. You can find our business at lanewellnessco.com. That's lane, L-A-N-E, wellnessco.com. You can find me on Instagram at switching four lanes. Uh, that's, you know, how I can't put that. Yeah. Ferrari and Jaguar switching yeah. four lanes. Yeah, it's so dope. Uh, anyway, that's, that's how so you can dope. find me switching four lanes. Um, <laughs> Uh, also on Instagram is our company uh, at Lane Wellness Co. And then you can check me out on YouTube. It is just Michael Lane. Just type that in there. Click the link in the Instagram too, and you know, find out more about what we got going on. Yeah, y'all gonna see how official he is, man. Hey, I really appreciate it. Um, what we say on the show is winners win, and when we win, only when you win. And thank you for being a winner, brother. We really appreciate that. Man, man I appreciate you for having me. I appreciate you for schooling me so I got something out of this. So that was, that was dope. Yeah, I love it, man. And I, I would love for you to come back to the show again. Uh, there's definitely some things that I want to work with you on. And uh, you got uh, such a huge platform and uh, just a wealth of knowledge that I really want to uh, share as a piece of the things that I'm working with. So we'll talk about that um, when we go offline, man. But uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. All right, man. Thank you. And we out. Boom. Thank you for joining the podcast. And remember, change your mind, change your money, change your life. We out.